Hi and welcome back to this next episode in the landscape and bracketing uh, um, episode of Rico GR102. In the first uh, first episode I showed you how to do bracketing and set your camera up ready for that. Um, and I did mention you do not need a tripod uh, to shoot landscape photography the, with the uh, Rico, but if you want to get uh, uh, more bits per pixel out of your shots and you want to do bracketing you've got to make absolutely sure that the camera doesn't move with, uh, between shots so I took a bunch of uh, photos I wasn't really pleased with any of them none of these are going to be prints but they're good enough for demonstration purposes now I did mention in the first video when we were setting up bracketing that I arranged them in the order that we would have the uh, the underexposed dark image first, and then the uh, the natural exposed image, and then the overexposed image, and that's what I've done with these images down here. You can see they're arranged uh, going uh, dark, mid, and light, and that would be a group of bracketed images right there. So uh, I'm looking through the uh, through the uh, collection of images that I've got and I think we're going to go for these three here so I'm going to select that first one there this is Adobe Lightroom by the way and we are in the developer module you can do this from the library as well but I'm going to select the first image there and I'm going to hold shift down and select the last image and then it's just a question of right clicking on that and uh, choosing photo merge and then choosing HDR for high dynamic range image so the theory is the uh, the image that this produces will be uh, a, an image comprising of these three put together so with far more bits per pixel more dynamic range and uh, a lot more to manipulate if that floats your boat so merging just set your your check marks here in auto align and auto settings these uh, these settings make sure the images match up and this feature here d ghost uh set to medium that takes a look at the image and if something like a bird was flying across uh in between shots and uh it appeared in several places um then this will be able to remove uh things like that that have obviously moved from one frame to the next so we're going to hit merge now and this will go ahead and create a massive uh hdr dng file and it puts it right after the first three there and it puts it there you can see it's very very similar to the uh this is the image down here it's quite similar to uh the overexposed image or just somewhere in between these two if i select it now this is what it looks like and then you can go ahead and do your basic um changes and edits to the file now i'm going to hop over now and take a look at dark table same situation in dark table i've selected three images here put them in their own folder i'm going to select the first one there and we are in the light table section of dark table and dark table is free by the way if you don't know that i've mentioned it a couple of times before but the learning curve on dark table is much much steeper it's not as user friendly as adobe but it is a very capable uh, piece of software i'm just going to bump that up so it fills the screen a bit more select the first image select the last image go over here and choose this module as they're called selected images what do we do with those we're going to create a hdr image and it just goes ahead and does it straight away without asking you about anything and uh, it's put it down here and it's now titled dng hdr and then you would double click on this now to bring uh, the dark room module up where you can begin editing this so first of all, you might want to uh, switch on lens corrections there. Uh, Darktable and Adobe Lightroom know all about the Ricoh uh, lens now. And then you can do stuff like uh, increase the contrast a little bit like that and uh, bring up the exposure, lighten things up. And then uh, there are other uh, things to look at like um, shadows and highlights, switch that module on and then you can play with the shadows and highlights. Now, usually what you do, you just expand this module here and then you would uh, bring the shadows up so you can see more of the foreground there. 
and bring your highlights down so you so you don't uh, blow out any of the highlights in the clouds there like that and uh, yeah that's how you do it but you you really need to um, study this program uh, look at some YouTube videos I won't be doing a whole series on this because I do not know enough about it but that's how you do it you merge them and then you can use them just like you would any other raw file but you have more data available to you so let's just go back to Lightroom here uh, Lightroom is much easier to use um, so we're in the uh, the basics here of Lightroom uh, we can increase the temperature guide there to warm things up a little bit there uh, bring up the exposure whoa not that much back down a bit there you go uh, contrast increase that and uh, bring those shadows up in the foreground well, that's already looking quite nice I don't like all these trees and stuff down here at the bottom so uh, what do you say we go in and we crop this uh, go in and uh, change from the original aspect ratio get a 16.9 going on for a widescreen look and uh, crop out this mess in the bottom the tree branch there and this balcony thing and then just go like that and then hit enter and that's it cropped and uh, it actually looks great over here but I'm, maybe I'm just too close to it um, I don't think it looks that good but uh, what does it look like in black and white? We can check that as well. Ah, oh, not bad, not bad. We could ex in increase the contrast a lot more in black and white, see if it helps, and uh, bring the exposure down a little bit. Ooh, then you get these god rays showing up a bit more. That's kind of sexy. And uh, yeah, I kind of like that. So that's not bad. That's how you do it in Darktable and in Lightroom. You merge your files together. I do like this one. This one turned out pretty good. Uh, maybe a little bit overcooked but it's not bad so that's it for bracketing and i'll see you in the next video bye for now